okay? Yeah. <laughs> While you're here. This is an acacia tree here. Yes. We have that one all over. Beautiful tree. Those things hanging. When they fall down, kids run and take it. And they play like a maraca. Makes a funny noise. It has uh, some uh, black seeds in different compartments and shake it like a maraca. Yeah, something like that. This is uh, the time for mangoes blooming. Normally, they will be ready by March. March is when they start getting ripe and falling down. When we start getting the mangoes, the first month, we're so happy eating mangoes every day. After three months, we don't want to see them anymore. <laughs> because they ready, get ripe at the same time and they all fall down. <laughs> Through the night, wind, with the wind. Ay, 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 so the next day is a lot to clean. And if we don't clean it, Two to three days after, they got so ripe that uh, the flies and the bees starts arriving, you know, and they they eating, they sucking out the, the honey. Do the birds eat kind of local? Like the birds eat anything, everything, yeah, in the fruits. And as long as they're ripe, they come and pick on it. Iguanas, squirrels, they all come and eat there. See, and bats. Oh. We have bats. See, we have bats, not vampires. <laughs> See. <laughs> we got the one area called Palmasola. That's going up there, you can see the sign. And uh, well, my friends in here, today we are going to visit some uh, 18 big stones, carved, and according to the professional people, the archeologists, they mentioned that this carving's been sitting there for the last 2,000 years, see? And uh, they have several symbols that they try to figure out and uh, they tell us, they mention to us, you know, so that's what we're going to see uh, in order to avoid telling you exactly what it is each uh, carving. Next to it, there is a, a tile with explanation in Spanish and English. So normally what I recommend people is take picture of this and take a picture of the carving and so See, very easy. Because uh, we are there basically to assist you, explain other things. And the whole explanation, it's in there. As you can see, the book is very hilly, like many parts of Mexico. And here, uh, well, the people have to struggle, especially living on these high parts of the city, because the problem here is the water, the running water. Water for toilet, water for uh, showers, for washing dishes, you know, sometimes laundry. Most of the time the people around here, they don't expect to get so much water for laundry. We have places down there, but at least for the other needs. Uh, it's a problem because during the morning, when it starts, everybody waking up, uh, everybody uses the water in the hotels, in the car wash, in the laundries, in all hotels and all different areas. So, for the people living up here, it's very difficult, you know, getting water that easy. And so, what they do, they wait till the night. At night, the water recuperates, the water pressure recuperates around midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And up until then, the water starts falling here in their containers. You're going to see that many people have black containers on the, on the roof, you see? Okay, at home you cannot do that because that will be a, a block of ice. But here, since it's not that cold, we can afford to do it outside and get the water. See? So it's tough, it's very, it's very tough for people living in these areas not getting water all day long. They have to depend on what they collect during the night. Mexican Golden Gate Bridge on your right hand side. <laughs> now, 
wonder Mexican people are normally small size, small short people, you know, carrying the books like that all the time. But we had to grow. That's my theory. See, sometimes you see smaller kids than that carrying the bags the double of the size. It's proven that uh, medically that they they don't help some of the bones in the spine, you know, because they are too heavy. And the funny thing is that when we're that young, we carry so many books. When we're in university, we just take a couple of sheets, and that's it, and a pencil. <laughs> I don't take as many books. Well, this is where the experience begins. All of these colorful flags, how they decorate it. When they celebrate parties, they close the street with one car here, one car there, and nobody goes across. That's, the, that's an agreement between neighbors. Of course, the parties for all the neighbors living here. So the others have to find another entrance. This is different kind of uh, celebrations, including the independence, including Christmas, including uh, New Year's, including uh, whatever. You're gonna see a lot of uh, street dogs everywhere. These are excellent dogs. You know, they hardly eat. <laughs> they have fleas. They get hit by cars. And they last forever. Bite. And they bite, oh yeah. <laughs> now you see them a little relaxed here in the daytime, but at night they go mad dogs. That's why they take siestas in the daytime, because they don't sleep at night. And they have such good gardens, believe me, that's why I'm saying they are excellent dogs. Ago, these people were uh, they arrived to live here as squatters means that there were no streets no restrictions at all so the people they stay wherever they could and uh, they find themselves a place to live by the time the government decided to put order on the streets and electricity and everything they have to tell everybody okay get away and let's leave some space for you to have a street Etc. Etc. You know, drainage, etc. So the people were not too happy about it. They have to give away some land. You know, not too much. As you can see, the streets are very narrow. You know, but otherwise they say, well, if you don't give out some land, no streets, no streets, no taxis, no nobody come up here. And that's always the same problem for the people. You know, so most of the streets are very narrow here, very small. But even though. They have a small street. The big buses come up here, you know, Coca-Cola, Corona, the milk, everybody drives around. Fruit called guava, guayaba, the yellow one, smelly, a lot of seeds, pink inside. This tree here, this is a guava tree. This is mango, you see the flower, it's just blooming. That's the flower, and then you can see some tiny, tiny mangoes growing. Yeah. This is delivery for purified water for people, for people drinking. We do not drink water from the top, 
sometimes the people instead of drink water drink tequila they say drink tequila safe water <laughs> remember one tequila two tequilas three tequilas floor tequilas <laughs> that's your limit floor tequila On the first one to kill us, the second one to kill you. <laughs> These are hosed with water. Sometimes you will see them leaking water. This is not electricity wires. The reason why you see the hose up there hanging is because many of the people, they go up to the mountains searching for some uh, spring water, you know, natural wells, you know, and uh, in there they insert the plastic hose, and that's why instead of wait for the water pressure to come up, they use it down the hill. As a matter of fact, these spring water places, you'll see them in the same carvings, where they show them mark in the shapes of uh, rounded circles. So they, they exist here ever since. everybody else gathers we're gonna continue all the way up to the hill I'll be, I'll be the one to lead you there okay? okay so in this moment we're going to the office in case anybody needs washrooms to wait for the office okay. perfect Mexican elevator. Watch out. Okay. Si, señor. Watch your heads. Shake it, don't break it. <laughs> 